Bustards are one of the heaviest flying birds and they have no frontal vision. So when they fly, they do not expect barriers in the sky. And the modern power lines cause most of their deaths. As you can see, the bustard here has collided with the power line emanating from the windmills, which are the source of green energy. Considering the declining population of the Great Indian Bustard, the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change mandated the Wildlife Institute of India to commence a conservation breeding program as an insurance against total extinction of the bustard in the wild. We are going to take you through the conservation breeding facility set up at SAM in the Desert National Park, a collaboration between the government of Rajasthan and the Wildlife Institute of India and a temporary facility has a set up, been set up at the SAM dunes. The old guard quarters at SAM were transformed into a conservation breeding center with the help of the International Fund for Hobara Conservation. Scientists from IFHC Abu Dhabi helped us in designing it and setting the conservation center up at SAM. The facility here includes an incubator for incubating eggs which are secured from the wild. Subsequently, there is a hatchering in which the, uh, the newborn chicks are kept, fed up to the age of about 10 months to about a year. The live feed facility is also maintained here. The area is made totally predator proof so that rodents or other carnivores like dogs and foxes cannot access the eggs or the chicks and we can rear them with utmost security. The process commences with the location of breeding females that are nesting and this requires a lot of field effort. Our field teams are well equipped. We had trained experts from IFHC who assisted our teams in locating females on nests. The regular movement of females within a localized area and a center homing place allows us to determine whether the female is nesting or is just wandering around on our foraging trips. So our team was able to locate several nests and with the permission of the government of Rajasthan, we were able to secure seven eggs in this season and put them in the incubator for hatching. We have almost had a 100% success rate till now and there are seven chicks which are born and reared in the conservation breeding sector at some. Once the egg is collected, the transportation from the nest site to the center is done in a vehicle in a chamber which does not allow any jerks to be um, given to the egg. Uh, once the egg is at the center, it is cleaned uh, antiseptically, then it is weighed and it is candled to find out the stage of development of the embryo. Uh, after that, it is put in an incubator. The incubator is maintained at a constant temperature and humidity in such a manner that the egg loses moisture at, at a predetermined rate uh, which is set for the Arabian Bustard Standards by the International Fund for Hobara Foundation who have been breeding these bustards for the last 20 years. Once the chick is ready to hatch, um, it starts pipping and um, you can hear the sounds as well as the movement of the eggs and it is moved to a different chamber allowing it to hatch. It takes anywhere from a few hours to almost a day for the chick to actually emerge when the shell is pipped. And the chick is hatched, it is left into a brooder, allowing it to um, get over the strain of uh, hatching and uh, subsequently move to the hatchery where it is fed uh, with live feed as well as uh, staples which are developed for the Hobara bustard with a high protein diet so its growth rate is maintained at the best uh, optimal standards. Regularly the chick is weighed and its uh, growth parameters recorded and uh, if it falls below or above the growth chart then its diet is adjusted accordingly. For exercise the chicks are allowed um, into a small uh, uh, open uh, sand pit where uh, till the age of about a week or so they exercise themselves and subsequently they are taken out into the, the dimensions of the cage are about 20 meters by 20 meters allowing the chicks to actually uh, exercise their legs. Since most of these birds are uh, long distance walkers, they need a lot of exercise for the limbs to develop well. And they are totally imprinted on humans since uh, this is the uh, founding population which will remain in captivity for their lifetimes and be used for breeding uh, purposes only. And the more habituated they are to humans, the easier it is to handle them for vaccination, for medication, for artificial insemination or for extraction of sperm. And uh, uh, the process of habituation 
is by massaging the birds on a regular basis, getting them trained to human presence and human handling. And they imprint on humans quite easily, as you can see in some of these videos, the birds walking around with human beings, as well as allowing close approach and handling. This is just the first mile in a 100 mile race for um, uh, the conservation breeding program. And we have started with a very good uh, success rate of having six, seven chicks, which is uh, incredible. But there are miles to go before we reach success because it will depend on how well these ch uh, chicks grow up, whether they breed in captivity and once they breed, um, whether we are able to rehabilitate the second generation born out of these chicks and train them to live back in the wild. So it's a long drawn process uh, and uh, we have to go in for a long haul uh, considering the project uh, to last for anywhere between 20 to 25 years.